Eight o'clock. Go ahead and get started. For the sake of the YouTube recording, I am Kevin. And we're, Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Kevin. we're gonna start with some stretches. Okay. Oh, okay. too far. Uh head circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Uh, wrist back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Arm circles. Everybody spread out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other ways. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, arms across the chest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Behind your head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, trunk twists. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cactus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, arms up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now uh, bend to one side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, touch those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Grab one leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go to leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Uh, grateful and proud. This is an interesting one for me. I don't feel a sense of personal pride all that often. A uh, little bit of a vulnerable personality trait to share with you guys. More of a sense of relief when I complete a task than a sense of pride. Uh, but I wanted to challenge myself to find something that I am proud of in myself. Uh, Fitting with our lean journey, I'm going to say that I am proud of myself for pushing through it to this point uh, with the kind of consistency and ambition that I have. And I am very grateful for everybody else's support along the way. There's been a lot of you that have offered, you know, positive encouragement and ideas and everything that have uh, kept me going and kept me motivated on um, lean so far. So thank you for that. That being said, does anybody have any shout outs for this morning? Right. Uh, shout out Jamie, because I call him like four or five times a week. And we just chit chat for like 20 minutes. And I usually I, I haven't really talked to a friend on the phone since I was a kid. So it's kind of nice. If I'm having a hard time getting the kids in bed, I'll call him and just kind of chit chat through it. So shout out Jamie. 
Okay. Anybody else? I shout out Monty yesterday. Um, Terry's gone this week on the other break for us, similar last week, and I got through my stuff in the office in the morning. And when I came down to cover the press, Monty had already seen himself and got out. Thank you. Uh, shout out to Ben, Chandler, Nate, Anna, who's not here. I don't have the exact count. I'm trying to get there. We're like 23 or 24 shipping SOPs yesterday. I think it was actually closer to 30 once we got on there. So we were really kicking butt on that. So long ways to go to create an SP for every product, but I think that was a really good way to make a dent in it right away. Thank you guys. Right, guys. I'm going to reiterate that in a slide coming up here. So. Anything else? Uh, for my before and after, this is our screen printing room. Uh, it's not used very frequently right now, so it's easy for it to be kind of one of those out of sight, out of mind spaces that can become a mess and can easily be left a mess. And Morgan decided to do a deep dive clean in there the other day and got some things very well organized, got quantities counted on all of the shirts and everything there. And you can see that positive improvement in that room. So thank you, Morgan. Kind of to follow up on what Brian said, I didn't pick a single SOP for the new SOP. I thought it was pretty cool when I opened up Gemba Docs and saw this screen and you had Hannah Chandler, Ben, Brian Myers out here getting involved. You got Nate, another one with Chandler down there, but I assume Brian Crater may have been involved with this as well. Maybe some others, who knows? Uh, but just to drive that home again, they're trying to create SOPs for how to package every single product that we ship out the door here, if I'm not mistaken. That is a huge undertaking. So thanks again for everybody that's working on that project. So the way that we're going to set up shipping in the new location is your, there's no flow, right? Everything sits right there. So when you look around the building, you say, how do I create flow? We create a packaging department. So everything that comes from powder coat will get packaged on a packaging line. And that means everything. Then everything that goes on the shelf will be finished, ready to ship inventory. Then you take and you reduce the shipping person down to one person per day that actually is putting labels and picking and putting labels. And then the other people are just focused on packaging. So it's going to become an MES step like you guys are familiar with in the back where they'll have a work queue and they'll be able to just work through the work queue to package the stuff. But in order to be able to get to where we can do this, we need to be able to have all these SOPs in place that show you how to package everything. So you know the box size, what bolt pack you need. Because in Epicor, the only time it tells you the kit components that go with it are when you pack it to ship it. So if you have a customer order, you can pull it into a pack and then you can see all the components. Otherwise, you have to go through and use Method Tracker to find what the components are and put them together. So this is like step one of like a four-step process to get there. And this is a big project. Uh, again, our core values are competitive, passionate, honest, creative, and driven. And then my meeting topic for the day answer where the question is asked or answer, answer where the question is. That's something that came to us through Ryan Tierney of the Lean Made Simple podcast. Uh, why this topic? I struggled to pick a topic for a meeting uh, my second time around. I knew I wanted to do one. I knew I kind of needed to jump back in and do one or felt like I did. And I went in the break room like three days in a row and looked at the list and couldn't really find one that I felt like resonated. So I was standing in there and the Corey signed up for one. Uh, he was trying to help me out and give me some feedback. Brian Myers jumped in and offered some feedback. And at one point, Kevin said, hey, why not this? Uh, and he mentioned that he thinks I was one of a few people here that he sees do this on a regular basis, day in and day out. And that kind of made me stop and think for a second. And I was like, I don't see it. You know, he sees it. Uh, so it caused me rather than to pick one that felt natural or felt easy to challenge myself and kind of self-reflect and see how, how exactly I do this each day. Um, in doing that, 
I did the natural thing where you go to, to Google or your search engine of choice and type in the phrase. And pretty much the only thing that comes up when you type in answer a question on Google, it turns out is how to answer me meeting uh, interview questions, how, how to answer the hard questions in your interview. You know, it, it kind of broke the internet. It felt like uh, and there wasn't a lot of good content on it. So I chose to kind of look internally here and see not only how I do it, but how we do it in a few different locations here throughout the building and made this video to go along with that. My topic today is answer where the question is asked. And I wasn't finding a lot of good content on this, so I decided to make my own. So what does it mean to answer where the question is asked? Well, let's think about it for a second. Here in the shop, where would I find a power tool? Well, hey, there they are. But what if I need a charged battery? Oh, there they are. What if I have an extra battery? Where do I put it? Oh, right there. But Kevin, where do I find electrical connectors? Hmm. Oh, hey, there they are. But what if I'm trying to clean up? Where do I find a broom? Oh, no, everything's gone terribly wrong. Where do I find a fire extinguisher? What the heck is in this bin? Now, I work in shed tech every day, so it's easy for me to find examples there. Well, let's take a walk and see if we can find some examples somewhere else. Hey, guys, where's the Amazon Prime drop-off? Oh, man, I've never used this machine before. What is the right way to turn it on? Maybe it's my week to clean the bathroom, but how do I clean the bathroom? Maybe I'm cleaning the bathroom and I run out of supplies. Where do I find more supplies? It's time for lunch here in the break room. Where the heck do I find a plate? Maybe I'm going to help out shipping for a day and I need to create a small box. But how do I create a small box? Maybe I'm the first person here for the day, or the last person leaving at the end of the day. How the heck do I lock this door? So hopefully by now, you're starting to get it. Answer where the question is asked is a pretty simple concept. Essentially, all it means is if asked a question, or if you find yourself asking a question, answer that question. Answer it not only for you in the moment, but for everyone long-term so that hopefully that question no longer has to be asked. We can do that using standardization, whether that be standard locations for specific items or standard work for how to complete a given task. Doing that will also reduce the waste in that task for you and for everyone else moving forward. So you won't be over-processing, you won't be wasting a bunch of motion, running around, trying to find what you're looking for or find the answer to the given task. So tons of waste is saved in answering the question where it is asked. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. This is, however, just examples of answering where the question is asked from my perspective and largely in my workspace. So take this information, think about it, process it, and go forth and answer questions where they are asked in your work area. Thanks for watching. We did it. So does anybody have any questions or comments related to that video or the topic? Would you say that any time you ask yourself a question around here, that's an opportunity for improvement? I never really thought about it that way, but definitely it could be. It was in that podcast. Yeah, right. yeah, definitely could be. That's an interesting take on it. Maybe if you're walking around, you're asking yourself, oh, that's an opportunity to make the process better. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of how we went about things back there when it came to the belt sander and the, the bandsaw and and how to clean the, the grinding booth and everything. So we just made SOPs and put them up there. So.
I feel we've done a pretty good job of this. I think we could do better in some regards. I think it's just like the next level yeah. of it. And I still think there are some areas where, you know, we haven't got to. But yeah, as like Jamie said, if you run into something that you don't know the answer to, try to find it, try to figure it out, and then try to solve the problem. I think uh, like something you just said there, some of it is just stuff we haven't got to. I know there's a lot of us that have ideas of ways we can improve things and we're just you know trying to work to get to those steps so just uh just keep moving forward keep pushing to to answer those questions uh, and hopefully we all learn and improve along the way for it uh to follow up on the end of that or kind of just to answer the statement of uh answer where the question is also leave no question unanswered so like you say if you find yourself asking a question as you go on about your day, stop and think, is that a question that needs to be answered now? Is that a question that you're gonna find yourself asking moving forward or is that a question you can answer for everybody moving forward and go about it the right way to do so using, again, the standard work, the Gamba doc, uh, visual control, whatever seems to be the right way for that given task. That's all I really have for the topic today. I think the the general concept is is pretty straightforward, uh, and it you know it might be something that doesn't come naturally or doesn't feel easy right away. But the more you work at it, the better we'll all get at it. Um, moving into the daily department check in, we'll start with saw department. Do you think for ten minutes today? Surfacing and tubing. Wasn't too much to do with surfacing yesterday, uh, except towards the end of the day. Me and Chris got out a few pallets and cleaned them up, or Chris cleaned them up while I was focusing on all the two lists that Casey got done, got those cut and bent. Laser ran good. Um, most of the morning, we made SLPs with Kevin and Bill for laser things, and then like the device be sitting on the bank. And uh, most of the schedule last night. Uh, CNC. CNC. We uh, finished steel D rings. Uh, did a receiver tube for Tim and uh, hooked Pete up with some stuff he needed some help with. And then I came up with the great dress room. Second part. Of the part. Fabrication. We were uh, my bad. Oh, that, we were missing him half the day, so we uh got with Jamie and, and made a good game plan for their cell over there. They're two men, and we had a. Pretty productive day yesterday. Yeah, I've got both cells going real good right now. Seem to be going real strong. Cool. Accounting and purchasing. Uh, things are going well, and we wanted to give you guys a heads up. Uh, anyone who's participating in 401k, that you'll be getting an email in the next couple of days with further instructions. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, engineering. Yesterday was a good day. Felt pretty productive. Uh, me and Joe got a lot of good American stuff finally pushed to Cameron properly so that he can start getting some stuff online that we've been talking about for what seems like forever. And Brian, we reworked a bumper that we've been having some trouble with on the new Tacoma, and that came together pretty good. So, all in all, I think it's pretty good day. Customer service? It was a good and productive day of customer service, too. Just crawling out of the weekend. Once again, no major players to put out, no weekend, no tech, no big tech fixes, so that's good. Marketing. Bad American manufacturing now talks to him. Yes. <laughs> now I'll try to give it something to talk about. Yeah, I'll try to talk about that. <laughs> I know marketing is always IT, but I would make it. <laughs> I know Cameron made a, a small improvement there yesterday too that he shared with us in WhatsApp. If you guys didn't see that, check it out. Uh, shipping? Uh, had a pretty good day yesterday, getting stuff back that we need to get out the door. Uh, pretty much working with all the leftover stuff from last month, so should be good. I did want to pause while you were on that and just say kind of a general thank you to the company and management and how cool that is that we share that on a daily basis to give everybody a kind of unified tangible goal. Um, I've worked a few different places at this point and there's a lot of places that are real 
is hush hush and secretive about numbers if they don't pertain directly to your job and your role. So that's pretty cool. Uh, robot. Uh, no production yesterday. No time. Powder coat. At the end of the day, it started a little slow, but we picked it up and got a lot of stuff done yesterday. Cool. See the when was that that we get a new guy in powder coat? Monday. Uh, Monday. Again, Next Monday. Monday. Yeah. Heads up. Uh, thanks to Chris, there's bagels in the break room. And I bought a toaster, and that's in there as well. Because <laughs> right. that would take like 14 days to do like six bagels and a little toaster on it. <laughs> Plus a key pot and breaker. Yeah. And I put it over on the break table on hold it over here. So <laughs> maybe it'll live there for now until we move. But hey Chris, thanks again for kicking ass last week and deserve you deserve that award and uh we're super proud of you. And really we just are happy we have bagels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris Hamilton. The bagels. Okay, the bagels. <laughs> thanks for bagels. Uh, tomorrow we've got Chris Shattuck with the power of recognition. <laughs> okay.